my preacher pastors were saying. Uh, I have a new haircut, and it's called Old Law. Thank you, Pastor. Um, Dr. Kenny hasn't cut all his off yet. <laughs> he soon will be. <laughs> and I will I will cut it. I'll cut his hair off. Um, I have visited with these preachers, Michael Jr. and a few other pastors, Elder Hennessy. Uh, these are my customers who, who allow me to cut their, their hair. Mm -hmm. And um, as Pastor John and Pastor uh, Elder Hennessy say, he has never come to the barbershop that we didn't have at church. Amen. No matter how long Pastor Elder Hennessy had to wait, he would always say to me, Mother, let's pray. Amen. One time he came to the shop and I had a sugar attack or whatever, and Pastor Hennessy held my hand and prayed for me. And I felt better. I truly did. Uh -huh. I called Pastor Hennessy's house, reading my ID, how I knew his number, and his wife answered the phone. And I told her who I was, and she said, I wanted her to tell him how he had blessed me that morning. <coughs> I felt better. I got up. I was sitting down. I had uh, a few customers in the shop. Uh, Keith Houston was one, and Pastor Albert Thompson was the other. I told her what her husband did, and she said, wait, let me let you talk with him. He'll be happy to hear that. And, and, and she told him, come to the phone, and he did. I'm just trying to say, whoever say I'm a preacher lover, you are absolutely right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and I make no apology. You want to preach? Come on in, I'll take you. Um, Pastor, uh, Reverend Dr. Danny Kelly's there. He's been my customer all of the years, and I watched his children grow. He was very encouraging to me and Lilo. When Tyler got in school, HSPVA. HSPVA. Okay, that's cool. Dr. Kelly, at first Tyler was uh, was not accepted, and of course that's the school he wanted to go to. Uh, I knew Dr. Kelly could help me, Lila and I. I thought about asking him, all of his children, but one, went to that school. And I thought he would be an influence. <coughs> but I didn't because I thought Tyler should go in on his own mirror. And he did. They called and said it was a mistake. And Tyler would be able to go. I said, if anything had taken place, um, she would help Lil to get it straight because she had enrolled him in Lamar. Um, but Dr. Kelly and his wife, Dr. Kelly, I sat at their table every Christmas. Um, I enjoyed the fellowship. Uh, they ate a little late. <laughs> like candlelight. I wasn't used to that. At candlelight, I had three meals. <laughs> but Dr. Kelly was, was my, my aunt cut Dr. Kelly's hair for his first time. And that he's been with me all of the years. And I'm grateful. 
and to lose weight. <coughs> when Hitler was in St. Luke's Hospital, um, Dr. Janice Kelly would visit to see how things were going with her health. Her husband would drive around and around because the parking was terrible until she visited with him. <clears throat> She's a doctor, so she couldn't say anything to the doctors that was wrong, but there was a correction that could be made by Dr. Janice Kelly. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. Uh, uh, I thank all of you for coming. Mm -hmm. You shown me your love, and I really appreciate it. I uh, hope everyone is back in school and looking forward to a good and safe school year. Um, a customer came in the shop and he said, "I'm going to enroll in school <coughs> this fall." And I said, "Good, that's good. Where are you going to TSU?" to Texas Southern University? He said, no, I'm going to TSU. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serving search with the right words. You said tonight, but I failed. But I can say that with God, all things are possible. Yeah. And I'm a true believer of that. I, uh, I know nothing about cutting hair. I'm only seeing my aunt cut. But it's a different story when you hold the pivots in your hand. I said that I was going to make it work. And I did. Uh -huh. I knew nothing about the vocation. But I started out, stayed in the same shop for a while. And I learned from each borrow manager that I had. Um, I finally, the last shop I worked in was Bocard New Look Barbershop. Bocard had a job someplace, and I, I was the one who opened the door and who closed the door, kept the shop the way he would keep it. He finally had business cards made, and the business cards say, Albert Bocart's New Look Barbershop, <laughs> specializing in the in every style. We did that. He said, Albert Bocart, owner, Margaret Woodard, manager. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no consent of mine. <laughs> and no benefit. <laughs> but I didn't mind doing it. I enjoyed it. Or he, a uh, very kind uh, gentleman, and he's easy to work with. And I enjoyed my tenure with Albert Bocart. Um, I told Pastor Dixon, as he said, because he said as a little boy, uh, first in his first ministry, and um, he moved on and on and on. So I told him about, Stephen told him about this occasion, and he said, I'll be there. And he came, and I'm glad to see him. Um, uh, I have the opportunity to share a meal with Pastor Jones and his wife and family. I met Pastor Joe right here, both at West, Pastor West Church and Pastor Jones Church. And I made it very clear to them, Elder Hennessy and whoever else, that uh, I was just eating dinner with them. I certainly was not going to join that church. <laughs> Asked me, Pastor Radcliffe said he's heard my pastor about him. What a good preacher he complimented all that. I said, yeah, that's right. But I never thought about going to Brentwood. <laughs> the things of faith, the church without walls. 
I enjoy my pastor, I enjoy my church, and I am in attendance at my church every Sunday. Amen. All if right. something is not physically wrong with me. Amen. All right. All right. Yeah. Pastor Joe Radiff uh, has been a great <coughs> friend of mine. He uh, stopped by when Little passed, and when he called me, and he said, um, are you busy? I said, yes. He said, well, I'll come back. I didn't know he was out fired. I said, no, come on in. And he came in, and my shop is, is a mess. But Ralph said to all of his friends, come on in, and, and I'm fine. I'm fine with the mess, and they are too. Pastor, Pastor Ratliff came in and sat in my chair and and blessed me. I I I, I did appreciate that. Amen. Uh, and there are other times I've been in his company, and he has blessed me. And I asked Stephen, "How do I look to him? Do I look like, but these nice hats I wear, do I look like? Maybe I, you know." He said, "No, he just like you." And he does. And I appreciate Dr. Joe Samuel Radliff. Amen. I don't know how Gerald Womack gets to know so much, but he does. He knows a lot of things, a lot of people. And he will, uh, he's very kind, very kind. Uh, how he finds out things about me, I don't know. Uh, but it, they're all good. Uh, he sat with me when my daughter passed away, and he comforted me in his short time there. And I really appreciate that, that, you know, uh, not being his member and, and announced it, that I would not be his member. <laughs> and of course, uh, I don't think it matters, <laughs> but I explained to them, I go to Hopewell Missionary Baptist Church, pastor by pastor, Dr. Asa W. Sam. And uh, I went there as a young lady, and I've grown old. I'm not mobile, but I still go to church. And being at the church where I go, the brothers are so nice to me until I don't, I just, I don't even get out the car with their assistance. And our uh, pastor teaches his sons at the church how to treat elderly people. Amen. And they are very kind to me. And uh, I have, um, uh, Brother Vardnick is here with me. He's involved as well. He really hasn't gotten it together. He doesn't know what he's going to do if he's going to cut him and teach. <laughs> but I can help him out any way you want to go. Would you stand up on the right hand so they can see you? Um, so they can see you. <laughs> he's a, he's a member of Elder Hennessy Church. And he's